Somebody was asking for me to do the Terica voice. So there's these things that have come out of the trial mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that have kind of gone viral in our mm -hmm. little um, Veil's Important People world mm -hmm. where um, we have the, I didn't do it. And then we have the, <laughs> my name is Terica and Terica <laughs> and he had to, can I come to the Taste Park Plaza Hotel? So I know. <laughs> It's a it's what? Sad thing. Somebody just asked me to do it. I couldn't couldn't end this. Is that how it. she sounded? Yeah. Yes. <sighs> yes. That's exactly. No. Yeah. And she's on social media, like yeah. So people, I've had some people say I watched her her social media, and you, you were spot on. <laughs> do 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 a couple more impersonations before we get out oh, of here. Not, I mean, I can. I'm not that good. I can only do Terica and. I didn't do it. <laughs> Those are the only two that I know how to do. <laughs> At least for now. <laughs> Y'all are, so are so silly. Y'all coming over to other people's platform with this silliness. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I love it. I'm having a good time with your people. They is keeping me very much entertained. I love y'all. I think, I I think so they're much. entertaining us more than we're entertaining I, them. That. <laughs> like what size and da da da. She thought she was buying um, Dre clothes he could later wear. She didn't know she was buying clothes that would be laid on the sidewalk within a couple hours of her buying them for Dre. So that's that's a number one. Um, the other piece is she already had this trip to L.A. planned because remember when I told the story in whatever video, day one or two, Terica was telling Tim after they, you know, bust down in the hotel room, she was telling Tim that she wanted <clears throat> it show be because y'all like this. <laughs> it shall be nice if Tim helped me open the boutique. So she was trying to open up her boutique. She already had plans to go to L.A. because she was going to the fashion district to buy things for her boutique. And this is where the ten thousand come ten thousand dollars comes in, because she was asking Tim for money when he gave her that much money. She was thinking the bulk of that was really based on what she asked was for the money for the boutique. So she ends up in L.A. Someone has asked in the chat if I could do the Terica impression, because y'all so silly <laughs> and I love it. So, <clears throat> thank you so much for the commentary, the great commentary. You are doing a great job. God bless you, take care. So with that, <laughs> Trivell know what Andre was, because Terica had, you may be a person that's newer to this, Terica texted, um, texted Trivell and gave him all the details throughout the day. But if you watch uh, watch back um, from day one of me covering this, you'll you'll catch up with all of that. Uh, can you do Can you do the tarot cut and press it again? <laughs> Y'all so funny. Y'all so silly. Y'all silly like me. I love it. <laughs> I didn't do it! <laughs> Anyway, oh, he claimed at that time that all conversations that he had on his primary phone were filmed as Melody had already said in her testimony. And so he said that was the reason why he had to burn phones because he couldn't have 
<laughs> these phone calls pop it up and he put it on speakerphone and it's Terrica like, hey, Tim, I'm going to be at Bottoms Up this weekend if you want me to swing by. Like, he can't do that. He couldn't do that. And so, um, yeah, he had multiple burner phones. She had her own, own phone number to call. Then we get to Tim when he first reached out to Terrica. So now we have a little bit more clarity because I don't think the... Um, I don't think the indictments cleared this up as for us as much as what I've heard, like from hearing the actual trial of being there is that when Tim got in town, he then reached out to Terrica via Facebook Messenger. And the reason he did that is because his, the phone number he had for her was not working because Terrica changed numbers fairly often. And again, when he told her to, which is probably why she didn't have a problem doing it. Um, so he was asked by his attorney, well, why did you? message her instead of facebook message her instead of calling her and he explained she, her number wasn't working and he said that he also used that method because he saw it on like her social media as like a flyer so he hit her up that way um he then goes into how he met terica so he says that he met terica actually earlier than we thought he met terica in 20 2009 at the bottoms up club he said, and, and she was, you know, an exotic dancer, exotic dancer. And um, he said that the night they met, they did not have, have, you know, relations, that they actually didn't have relations for the first time until one, one and a half to two months later. It actually aligns with, Tor it actually al aligns with Terrica's version a little bit, because remember, T Terrica told us that, she told us the same thing, and she said that they didn't really connect until she saw him at a wing place. <laughs> Her words, not mine. A wing place. Uh, when we met at the wing place, it's when we first exchanged the numbers. So that's what she told us. So that aligns. That piece did. You know, when you're telling, when you're telling stories, fibs and stuff, you got to interwoven, you know, interweave the truth into there as well to kind of, you know, how people benefit her down, like people like, oh yeah, but that part is true. Like, yeah. So um, this was all prior to the show. So he met Terrica. This part gets funny and, and <laughs> at the same time. So this is why I hold on to that. He met her prior to the show. They was, you know, getting down prior to the show. He was asked then when did the show first air? The show first aired in 2011. We're gonna address that. I'm getting to that. It's in my notes. <laughs> Um, I hope I didn't pass it because I did skip over some stuff. Um, but I, I'll try to remember that. Start that for me, moderators, and start some um, a few other questions for me if you haven't gotten around to it. it we have over 4,569 comments. <laughs> That's why I can't never get through them by myself. So, yeah, if you could start, um, I don't know, 15 or so. I don't know if we're going to do that many, but just give me at least 15 star comments so that when um, when I take a break for that, um, I got some stuff to select from. And then start this one just in case it get missed in my notes um let's see so he was then asked how often he and terica had relations y'all see i'm trying to talk a little better than, than my normal uh sloppy way of describing these things but he said that they had relations every two months or so and he said that each time he had to you know cough up some money this was a, a transaction even though I told y'all X is free, <laughs> it's free. If you didn't know, Tim never got that memo. And so he, he was tricking off $250 to $300 each time. Now, this is when they first met. Keep in mind, when they first met before the show started airing. So then he said after the show went on air, Tim had backed off of dealing with Terrica. And he said the main reason he, he kind of draw back on dealing with her was because of his image. He's now on TV. It's supposed to be like a wholesome family show. And he's everything but that in his real life. And so he didn't want, um, you know, that to come up, you know, be like, um, you know, welcome to Sweetie Pie's son, you know, stripper prostitute <laughs> tells all. <laughs> he was trying to avoid that. So he, he slowed down on dealing with her. He said eventually, though, I, I forgot when, but like, you know, maybe a season or two in, he got comfortable and got set back in his regular ways. And he said that he started dealing with Tarek again. 
with Terica again. And then the price went up. <laughs> Cause she like, <laughs> you on TV, <laughs> you, you gotta give me more. And so he said he started tricking off 700 to $1,000 each time. And so he said it had been seven to 10 months since he saw her. And then he said it was, I'm trying to, I can't remember if this was the timeline between when the show started or, or right before um, the Andre thing. I can't remember because I didn't, I didn't write my notes properly. Forgive me. So anyway, it says, he then says that Terrica would occasionally hit him up for money outside of them having relations. So every once in a while, she'd be like, Tim, could you give me some money? Because my phone bill is due. It's about to get cut off. My rent is due. I'm about to get evicted. So he then, um, <laughs> I love doing that for y'all. <laughs> so then um, he said, you know, every four to six months, she would hit him up for money randomly for phone bills and rent, et cetera. He said he would, you know, trick off five to $700 each time. <laughs> One of y'all pull out a calculator and start adding up all his money. I'm telling y'all he tricking off. <laughs> this is why he broke. This is why God forbid that he felt he needed to do what he, because he ran through a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of money. So he was then asked if he had relations with Terica on March 16th. Is that right? I might've wrote that wrong, but I, I, was it March 16th of 2016 or March 14th of 2016? I think I got that backwards. Anyway, he said that he's now, again, the story is aligning here. He talks about how he and Terica after the act of having relations, they took a shower separately. She said the same thing. Uh, he said that they had small talk because he hadn't seen her in a while. So I think this was a seven, ten, seven to 10 month stint that he hadn't seen her since the last time they had, you know, he had tricked off money on her. Well, in that way, um, paying for services. So he said they had small talk. He said that at that point, he found out that Terrica was trying to open her new boutique. And another tidbit, I think I might have heard this somewhere. Another tidbit was that she had also just purchased a building that she was trying to renovate. So Terrica wasn't completely, you know, she was on her on her business in a way, trying to be. Uh, she was a hustler. And so she I think if I'm not the way he said it, I thought he was talking about uh, residential property. But what I think he might have been talking about was actually the commercial building that her boutique was about to go supposed to go in. But um, I'm not 100 percent sure because that wasn't clarified. So then he said that Terrica hit him up at that during this conversation. She hit him up for money for her boutique. And he said and remember, this still aligns with what Terrica said as well. So then he said that when she hit him up for the money, he did give her money. He claims that he only gave her three thousand dollars more than the one thousand to seven hundred he was giving her as the transaction money for them, you know, um, doing, doing what they did, the relations. So, oh, this was an interesting tidbit that he said that Terica, Terica now, mind you, had been around so long. She had been around since 20, she had been around since 2009. And this all is happening in 2016. So she's been around quite a while. He said that she actually met Miss Robbie on he said she met Miss Robbie, but what I gathered from it was that she met Miss Robbie a few times. He said that Terrica would actually come to the restaurants. This is why we saw, and this is a side note, this just came in my head. Remember when Janae would act a fool on Tim on the show? And remember when she, he was interviewing new workers and she had to come to the show and she like, I'm going to interview these people and all of that. And it looked like she just being crazy psychopath, you know, the way they kind of painted it out. That's because he got strippers coming up there who he hooking up with <laughs> and then she coming here getting chicken all in my face you know she was justified he he dogged janae he dogged janae he really did um yeah so she had met miss robbie he's uh he was also asked if miss robbie knew um if miss robbie knew who terica was as in like she a stripper and she's a prostitute he said that no, she just to her, to Miss Robbie, Terrica was just another one of the girls that Tim has around, kind of thing. Because Miss Robbie knew he was a, a old too. <laughs> um, so then he they start talking about the conversation that led into Dre. 
And Tim, when she, you know, asked him what he had going on, he, because she knew Miss Robbie, now keep in mind, see, we land, we land the foundation for this, this, welcome to Sweetie Pie's redo. <laughs> uh, so now, you know, he, she knows Miss Robbie. So it's not strange that she'd be like, how your mommy, Miss Robbie doing? So he then leads into, oh, uh, you know, she okay, but you know, um, her house got broken into and they took a lot of stuff. And, you know, we think it's my, my nephew. And, you know, uh, you know, his name is Dre. And then he shows her a picture of Dre. And then she and she said this too. Remember, she said this. And so he shows a picture of Dre. Terika is like, I know him. He was just in the bottoms up club. I got his information too. So he's like, what? For real? And so. She was like, he told me that he was a rapper from uh, New Orleans and well, he had a lot of money. Where he get that money from? He's like, he got that money from breaking in my mama's house. Can you help me find him? I feel like I'm doing a play now. <laughs> Why y'all got me acting silly? We all know and believe in our hearts that she had no knowledge of what was going on in this matter. I am hoping that you can consider this letter as a reasonable statement based on my believing Terika's innocence. Your believing Terika's innocence has nothing to do with the court system. I want to thank you, your honor, for your time and attention in this matter, respectfully and sincerely. And they give their name and don't tell us who they are. <laughs> I mean, they give their name, but like no relation. I don't know. Who are you? Thank you, person. This was a pretty well written written letter, but you got to come from a more factual side, just not just the emotions uh, of what you believe to be true. Uh, okay, I got another vote for you all. The thick letter is from another person who is a part of my friends and family. Is this one uh, typed hieroglyphics, crayons, hangman? <laughs> Or, or on bottoms up letterhead. <laughs> Put in your votes. <laughs> What's your votes? Okay, let me. Oh, I gotta fix it where I ain't. I ain't putting no nobody's info out there. What's the votes? Handwritten. I know we've been tortured with so much of it. <laughs> kind of gave up. Dude. I'm, I'm surprised we even saw that one. <laughs> well, but I guess now what we got two typed letters. What we got here? What we got here, y'all? Screen share. Drum roll, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> One more. <laughs> we got another type letter. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's see what they saying. Um, uh, 2E says, uh, I just want the people congregation to know we did the best we could listening tonight. <laughs> Lord knows we won't remember <laughs> Remember not even two of these letters <laughs> when he's done. Exactly. I ain't going to remember me, then I'm the one reading them. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Sugar Spice, for the uh, super chat. I really appreciate you for that. <sighs> okay. Um, oh, okay. I came back because I want y'all to guess one more time with me. My family, we, I got the more letters, and I wanted to know, do you think that we have finally been found at Terry of the family? This, that letter, is it handwritten? <laughs> <laughs> is it written in pole dancing? <laughs> is it handwritten, scribbles, hieroglyphics, or typed? Put in your voice now. <laughs> <laughs> Say mumble jumbo. <laughs> uh. All right. Drum roll, please. Look at God. Won't he do it? <laughs> Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Terrica because uh, yeah, they say she go to church a lot. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Uh, still too little, too late, though. <laughs> All right. Let's read this one. Has my family. 
finally given us the type letter so that we can um get me out early. What the vote? Scribbles? Handwritten? Typed? Or have a glyphus? <laughs> vote now. It's coming up on the screen. Drum roll, please. What we got? I ain't even looking at y'all comments. What we got? Handwritten, handwritten. <laughs> What's about to say? Written on. I haven't seen crayons yet. I'm waiting on crayons. <laughs> Somebody's handwritten in chalk. <laughs> y'all so funny. <laughs> Save <Survey> sis. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> y'all so silly. <laughs> oh, y'all in these shenanigans, I tell you. Get your votes ready. Y'all already know the deal. Get your votes ready. What is this? I think Tarek is going to ask you again. Something's the next letter. What did you think my family sent my attorney? Do you think? Thank you, T2, for the super chat. Val appreciates it. Do you think my family sent the letter that is scribbles? Hand Richard, hieroglyphics, or finally a type letter. Vote now. God damn it. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Terrica, your family, we 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 gotta we gotta talk. All right. <clears throat> All right. Next one. Thank you. Next one. Get your votes ready. What we got? What you think? For this next letter from my family, what the vote? Is it handwritten? Hieroglyphics? Scribble, <laughs> chicken scratch, <laughs> or well, have we finally found Terica? I'm sorry, have we finally found the Terry in our family? I'll tell y'all the secret we ain't got no Terry's in our family. <laughs> if you ain't figured it out already. <sighs> oh. <laughs> I ain't showing y'all no more of them unless I need help uh, understand. I'm just tell y'all whether or not it's. <laughs> I'm just. We ain't got to guess no more. Uh, th that part is over. <laughs> we already know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> they, they <go> paint. <laughs> right. Oh y'all. Oh y'all. Oh y'all. All right. Next one. All right. It was almost like she was ready to release it all, and she did. And she never. She. Uh, she said she could have told them, you know, she could have uh, invoked her rights at the, any point. She never did, et cetera, et cetera. She was a very cooperative witness, which got them to this point. She says she was also the first person to plead guilty. Um, and Terica did all that with no promises of any um, reduction of sentencing, any favors, any deals. There were no deals or anything on the table when she gave all this up. None. Um, she says, due to her uh, cooperation and the fact that she's experienced so much abuse that it leads, leads you to understanding how her mind doesn't quite function the same as the average person without like those are my words, not quite her words, but that's what she was saying. She says that um, they are moving to uh, they were move moving to dismiss, have the court dismiss count two. Um, which would bring her from having two counts to one count. That one count held a maximum of, well, I ain't gonna say that, but the one count would, would be 36 months. They were requesting 36 months on that on that one count. And they were asking the court to basically agree. And so uh, Judge Ross agreed. He agreed. Um, He says a little bit more. I think I get, I, yeah, I get to that in a minute too, I think. So uh, then... He gives um, Terica, he says, Miss Ellis, 
uh, you know, you have a, a chance to speak now. Um, you know, what, you know, do you have anything that you want to say? So Terika, <clears throat> for, for y'all, because yeah, for, for y'all who, who, who want me to do this kind of stuff. So uh, he says, uh, Terika, you know, say what she needs, ad address the court or whatever. So Terika addresses the Griggs who have said they don't want to hear a damn word from her. <laughs> she then says, <clears throat> to the Griggs family, I truly did not know harm would come to Dre. I was afraid for my life. That's why I had to keep talking to Tim. <laughs> and then I have, um, it's hard for me to do all that and the crying and all that, but uh, it says Terika, uh, I said Terika started bawling. She was, it was, it was bawling. Like she was trying to get the word, like the more words she said, the more crying started to come out to the point that you, you couldn't, she couldn't talk no more. She was crying so hard. Uh, at that point, then her family, a few of them in that section started crying as well. Again, it was so many people and so much going on. Uh, I couldn't tell you who was crying and all that because it was sounded like about six people crying at the same time, um, like loud. It, it sounded like a funeral. It literally, literally sounded like I was at a funeral in that moment. Then oh, I meant to ask uh, uh, Chronicle. I don't know if either one of them are in the chat, but I meant to ask Chronicle or um, Jay if they had uh, understood this. But at this moment, Terika's boohooing, the family's boohooing. I then at that point realized I think the Griggs, there's crying over there as well. The aunt screams out something like, you should have been better. Like, that's all I heard. I couldn't tell you what she said, um, but she screamed and she stood up and pointed at her. It was, it was. And so then the marshals, you know, ran over whatever and they tried to get control. Um so then uh, Judge Ross said, uh, Miss Ellis, you uh, take your, take take a moment, compose yourself, et cetera. Uh, he didn't he didn't reprimand um, the because uh, um, I, I, I think it was Aunt Karen. I think it was Aunt Karen. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Aunt Karen in the blue. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, because she got up. So I think it was Aunt Karen. Judge Ross didn't didn't reprimand her or anything. Um but the you know the marshals went over to get her settled and and all of that. I'm gonna try not to take a break on y'all for a minute. I'm, I'll take a break before we start doing uh, comments. Do another commercial break. Um, okay, so then um, Terika composes herself. Not even a good sixty seconds. It wasn't long. Um, says um, she then goes on to say. I may have seemed like I was living my best life, but I was scared. I've gotten closer to God. I wanted to help girls. I want to help girls like me. Um, I, and then she she went on to say how she <laughs> y'all got me doing this voice. It just be throwing me off. <laughs> but uh, she went on to say that she wanted she wants to help. Like, you know, once she's out, like uh, she's gotten closer to God being in jail. Uh, she felt like I know, well, I heard this before. She felt like God slowed her down and um, to to get him get her to be closer. She wants to work with young girls who've had a hard life with her to show them a better way, help them get self esteem, you know, things of that nature. And I thought that was good. I was like, this is what should have been in the character witness letters. Now we see that it didn't really matter because she only got thirty six months. But that would have been helpful to talk about how she's learned lessons and how she's going to be a benefit to, uh, to society. Cause that's what the court really cares about. Uh, not uh, being remorseful, all of that, but also then how do you become a benefit to society versus a burden on society? Um, so she says she wants to work with girls, you know, like her. Then she goes on to say, I apologize to my mom and my girls and my family. And I think she said she embarrassed them or something. I can't remember. Um, okay. Okay, then Judge Ross, and she was saying other stuff. Again, y'all, I can't, I can only write down so much. Uh, then uh, Judge Ross interrupts and says, All right. <laughs> and she's like, And I want to work with little girls who help them with their self esteem and, and be a better person like I want to be. And Judge Ross is like, All right, all right. <laughs> Just cut her, he literally cut her off, like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I put it in quotes, so that's exactly what he said. All right. <laughs> then uh, Judge Ross addresses the Griggs. He um, compliments them on their courage and grace. The fact that they've had to do this multiple times. They, he said, not only have you gone through that trial that was intense and that was what uh, nearly two weeks of a trial. But now they've had to go through and you got to think about the average family who may deal with these sort of things. They might do a trial. Usually it's not two weeks, might be a couple of days. On top of that, usually it's one person involved. They do that sentence hearing and then it's kind of like, you know, let's start healing, so to speak. This we're on person number three and we got one more to go. And the one to go is the, the, the big, big thing like this. is That's the family. That's another blood relative that they grew up with like they knew them knew them they were close that's a lot y'all that's a lot hey popping like i'm post to watch out for the people that ain't close to speak a little something you could toast to i ain't trying to hear about what you won't do moving like i'm into Hit the ground running like the rent do Speak a little something that you're into I ain't tryna hear about what you been through Like hold up, hold up, say what's the hold up I got the pack, who got the roll up? I'm tryna pull up, it seem like every time I show up It gotta go up, see the drip, they see the glow up Oh, now they know us, see it's funny how my pockets out of shape But I fit for the flex Clear the phone call, hit my chick with a text Parlay through the bird with my drip from the jacks Save a couple hundred by your 